I fucking hate you. Everything you've said to me, it hurts. But I know it's, but I want to, I want to make sure it's not you being a jerk. I want to make sure that, because I, because what, the, you know, a uh, 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 context to say, what's your earliest memory of that, of that feeling? Men's group is a group of men who meet periodically to talk about life for support when men grieve, to find human connection, to examine the male identity, to disclose and have deep-rooted personal feelings, including the ones that society doesn't welcome, and sometimes to remind one another of inner wounds. It's a place for unguarded conversations, to investigate with a council of men the riddles of life. Yeah, one of the things that I find most valuable about men's groups is that there's a chance to recognize what is immediately present, like if I'm afraid, then oh, if I am afraid, then okay, I'm afraid, and that's the truth of that moment. And it's possible to be open about the truth of the moment without having it define my whole life. It doesn't mean I'm always like that, but I can kind of explore and every facet of myself that maybe doesn't get that much space in everyday life. It could be anger, it could be fear could be um, insecurity. It could also be um, maybe even even self-acknowledging, like self-acknowledgement can also be taboo. There can be taboo in either direction. And, and I think to explore the full range of being human and being a man is one of the, the gifts that a, a men's group offers. My ability to listen has improved greatly. Because when men share, I, I, get what, I get an energetic bump and I know, one, because it identifies with me, I go, me too, me too, me too, me too. Like I hear, I identify with, almost without exception, every time a man shares, there's something about a sharing that is in me too. And this is the beauty, I think, of a men's group, is that we, 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 come, we, we can be strangers that come together, but we share what it's like to be a man, and and, and it, you know we've all had we come from different cultures and different upbringings, but it's a, it's a shared experience. So to have the company, the fellowship of men, and know that you belong here, you may feel isolated and your experience has been different, but there's a shared experience that we all heal when we're when we're together. Expression gives rise to clarity, so it's not always. I think after something is being expressed, then it can change, it can transform. But if, if I keep it inside myself and don't uh, tell anyone, then it can get stuck and, and it can become a problem. But once I express it, then suddenly it changes. So I, I think um, with expression, it's not about the expression in itself having to be very meaningful or it be in a certain way. It's more about the, the, the process itself of expressing whatever is there will give it an opportunity to change and move. One of the wonderful um, side effects of any form of self-disclosure is you learn about yourself. When you start opening up to others, you start hearing yourself say things that you weren't so clear about. Yeah, can we create a forum where we can have space so we can really show up? So, so who shows up? Our lover? our killer, our judger, like all the traits, all the things that we've been, that we've been informed is like, mm, that's not good. No, 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 I don't want to see that. No, but if we have that in us, the tantrums we never, we weren't being able to have, you know, our disgust with whatever, you know, even our parents, our sexual um, uh, fantasies or, or like, like, sh sh like openly share, share this stuff so that we can A, realize that that doesn't diminish our goodness. We're humans.
is there something you can do in a men's group specifically well that you wouldn't be able to do on your own with your spouse with a psycho normal psychotherapist mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if it's exclusive to a men's group but i find a men's group is a perfect laboratory to try things out if it's built if it's got some good if it's got good principles confidentiality and um i mean whatever whatever those might be to make you feel safe. Mm -hmm. That's the place where you can, you can really t kick the tires, test the waters, and see, you know, see what the reaction will be, and see how, how well or not your, uh, it lands, mm -hmm. you're accepted. Mm -hmm. What surprises me is when I see men share in a, in a, in a men's group, and, it, and you get a sense it's, re it's something really risky for them, it's something they haven't told anybody, or they're ashamed of it, and they really want to put it out there. Uh, when they get the resonance back, where if you would inquire and say, well, he just said something that was pretty risky and you know, something personal, does, does anybody relate to this? And you see the majority of hands go up. That's, that's sort of breaking the isolation that we think of ourselves as I'm the only one who thinks this way or has these opinions. And when you see other men are like, you know, have, can identify with it, it, it validates your, your being. There is often a, a limited understanding of what love and care means. And, and I think that, uh, unfortunately, some of the gifts that men can bring, which is often a bit different from what women bring, has not been valued enough. That uh, to challenge someone else or challenge oneself or, or to kind of go into something that is difficult with fierceness and, and commitment, like, let's figure this out that can be an act of love and care. And, and, but there's often a lot of fear of this intensity. And, um, but I think that's, that's very sad because it's, it's a misunderstanding. And, uh, and because it's um, misunderstood, there is a lot of confusion around uh, the, the potential kind of cutting through ability that perhaps is a bit stronger in men than in women. And, and that, that confusion can also lead to that it cannot really be used appropriately and effect effectively in the world. But the men's groups can be a training ground to use this ability to cut through the bullshit in oneself, in relationships, in work, and so on. And, and that's an aspect of love and care, as I see it. Groups of both men and women have their own unique attributes too, but there are things that only men can do for other men. Men's groups are a place to get a supportive connection with other men in an all-male environment to which many men have no easy access and which they may have been told cannot be entirely trusted. Yes, you know, in terms of civil liberties, we're all equal in terms of, you know, laws, etc. At least ideally we should be. I mean, that's the struggle we have, you know, as a society. But no, we aren't equal uh, in our temperaments, our psychologies, our proclivities, etc. That it's perfectly fine to, to acknowledge it and accept it, uh, rather than to work on it. So, um, and, and it's very wide that, that you know, say that, that in the gay movement, that's sort of a different angle. And sometimes people think, oh gosh, are you guys a gay group? Is it a gay thing or something? No, it's not a gay thing. It's a male thing. But, but gays are very keen on, you know, identifying, you know, that identity as in terms of sexual orientation. And if you just extrapolated it more, okay, aside from sexual orientation, okay, well, what is it about men, period? I do want to thank you all for inviting me here today. It's certainly very interesting. Um, 
Karen's working again, which is cool. Stella's in first grade, and she's doing great. I don't mind taking care of Jack. I like, I like being a dad. We spend a lot of time at the park. Some, some of the women there, they, they look at me a little funny. You know, like, hey, what a cool dad playing with his kids, but hmm, why isn't he out there working? If people are talking about thoughts, I think that God is this or that my spirituality is that, Th those are ideas and there is a place for ideas in a men's team but generally speaking you can express ideas fairly openly in less intimate domains um, there are meetup groups on spirituality and on cooking or politics and um, it's it's important to have a rough idea of what people think about politics and spirituality as men's team uh, members, but it's wasting precious time if that is a lot more of that than there is. I'm really anxious about my mother's illness. I'm uh really horny and i've got the hottest girlfriend that i just met and oh my god i haven't felt this way since i was 22. um i'm so excited i'm gonna I, I i think i'm gonna land a big deal i'm gonna i'm gonna get a major contract um you know i'm lonely i'm fucking lonely i i just put my cards these are more appropriate, it seems to me, for a men's team, for any sort of intimacy group, than, than sort of the ideological. And, um, and I, th I think the best men's groups and the ones that are longest recognize that. And because you know, I might not be interested in politics or your politics or uh, environmental issues, but I'm always interested in what my brother is feeling. That always strikes me as really interesting. So I think the antidote to intellectualization is to have guys in the team recognizing that and then saying, you know, depending on the culture, some will require that you ask permission to ask a question. Others, no, you can, after the end of the share, what are you feeling about that? You've just talked about this contract and how Joe was doing that and, and Ed was kind of coming to get you, and, you know, and you thought he was trying to cheat you in a way, but like, okay, great, those are all facts and figures. How do you actually feel about it? What was going on? That's way more juicy. I don't really care about Ed and his Machiavellian ways. <clears throat> I'm really interested in your your internal world. And the more the more guys that can sort of herd us all into talking about our feelings, the juicier it gets. What is the value of having the other man present? So a number of things. Um, one is that there's, there's support. There's support for both men to be held in, uh, I think it sort of validates the sacredness of the container and that this man can be supported by other men in whatever way he needs. He might say, go away. like. You know, don't be here, and that, and the, and the group can do that as well. Or, or he can feel challenged by the group, and if he's curious enough, I mean, generally, my experience is when when men are in a group and they develop sort of a sense of safety because as they get to know everybody's history, 
and the man, and the man personally, then you, you you become to trust, and uh, I think it, it opens up where you can go deeper in your process, knowing that you won't be shamed or uh, be misunderstood, or be you know be just like discarded, like oh you're just you're damaged goods or whatever. But I think uh, the group container also the wisdom of the group is there. So occasionally I'll. If a man's working on something and, and the group is there, and you can feel the energy, I can feel, I am really get in touch with what's feeling here. A lot of times, a man on the outside, if you say, what are you feeling here? Because we're, we're, we're in this collective energy field. And don't think that what you're feeling is, is not important. Like, I, what are you feeling right now? And if he goes, oh, I feel sadness. And then you can sort of say, is anybody else feeling that? And... Even if no one else is, you can claim there's sadness here as we watch this man struggle with something. And another man might say, I'm bored. This is bullshit. This is taking too much time. That's valid too. There's, there's, there's um, um, frustration. So you begin to solicit and then you realize it's like all of that can be present. It's a part of it. It's how, what you're feeling doesn't have to be, you know, we all, it's, it rarely is where everybody feels the same kind of feeling, but these are valuable. These are valuable insights, so that it's information you can bring. The man will hear and go, you know, does that mean anything to you? He's he's feeling um, frustrated and he's feeling sad, and uh, and you see where it goes. So it's essential that everyone feel, everyone is participating, whether they think they are or not. They're within this collective energy field. They're hearing the same things, they're experiencing it, but what's going on inside for them is of value to the overall process. It's one of the things that I notice about men who are uh, part of a good men's group and who show up in fierce authenticity is they acquire this mountain-like quality. Um, this kind of groundedness, this stability um, in their relationships. They show up as a mountain um, in the lives of the women and children in their lives. And um, that is such an important contribution that we as mature men can offer to our homes, our beloved ones, the women, society in general, our workplace. And, um, you know, there is this, this beautiful saying from our uh, tradition, man must be the mountain so that she can flow like the river, rage like the wind, pour like the rain, and float like the cloud. And that is such a, a powerful reminder of how multidimensional the nature of the feminine is. And the joy that comes out of that dance of being that river, that rain, that wind, that cloud, that is possible. A woman is, is able to embody that only when we can show up as that mountain with that, that groundedness, that stability, that clarity, that patience, all of that. My ins here's my insurance policy. All the good men I got in my life that will inspect me and that will make sure that when I screw up, because I screw up once in a while, that I can get back on track that I'm not going to take stuff out on her and I'm not going to make her pay for stuff and, you know, I mean, emotionally, whatever. I'm not going to do that because the man I got in my life won't let me do that. Now, I'm going to run up against stuff in a relationship that sometimes I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with her. I don't know how to be with her. Now, I have found myself over the last 26 years, the best way for me to get that the absolute best way is from other men. And it's there. And sometimes I gotta search a little bit to find the right men, because a lot of men don't have those answers as well. 
but there's gold there when I can find those men that can mentor me and guide me and teach me how to be that man, how to be with my wife, with my woman, so that we're not at odds with each other. We're not fighting like cats and dogs. We're not setting a poor example for our children. So because I don't need her for all of those things that we need, my cup's full, I come home and I can be there for her. I can be there to listen to her and to be there for her no matter what her day's been like and spend time with her and take whatever it is she needs to give me, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it is, without taking it personally, without reacting. Uh, and also as a result, she gives, she gives me more in many, many ways than I think any woman ever has in my life. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, is it all bliss and wonderful all the time? No. I mean, sometimes she thinks I'm a, I'm an idiot. I'm a jerk. She gets angry with me. But when she does, I don't, I don't have to react. I don't have to defend myself. Mm. My cup's full. Mm. Does that make sense? Definitely. It's, it's. I mean, I didn't think it was possible. If you, if I'd have sat here, thirty years ago, totally different story. Totally different story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying is is really relevant actually to my my personal situation right now and i guess i um, and i don't think you're alone there by any stroke of the imagination yeah and i think what happens is is often the the relationship with other men gets not not prioritized enough and i and i kind of going like you know when there's trouble in the relationship i go oh my god i need to put more attention more time into the relationship with the woman and I actually neglect the relationships with the men but therefore my cup is not being filled in that way you described and so that the time that i'm spending with her is not maybe satisfying or filling her cup in that way you describe, which then, I mean, yeah, sure, we're spending more time together, but it seems like it's more time in, in tension or in difficulty, which seems to start to damage the relationship. And so I felt like more emotionally secure having like these close bonds with eight, seven other guys. And I felt less needy around, say, my girlfriend. and. That just made the relationship healthier. If I don't need her so much, uh, I can be more independent. I can, I can be a little less anxious if things aren't going okay. And all of that just makes the relationship better. So, um, and also it, it like having regular training, like one of the neat things about um, an emotional, uh, an immense team is that it, requires you to sort of go inward a fair, fair amount. Like, what is really going on? Like, I don't, you know, we don't really want to hear about your attitudes to the Canucks or, um, you know, the environmental catastrophe. I mean, those could be important subjects, but what we're really here for is like, what really is going on inside? Let's, let's open up and see. And um, that actually is good training for when you come to be in a really intimate relationship like like being with a woman is you've had some practice looking inside and figuring out what you feel about things and you can bring that I'll call it expertise to a relationship with a woman so there's another um, advantage to it I mean I say all this of course saying man and woman I'm a straight guy and actually everyone in our teams are all straight but I'm sure the thing thing would apply if if I was gay and and and, and had a, a a guy friend rather than a girlfriend. Don't tell us that the men here can't be trusted. Each man in this group has dedicated himself to working on his own shit. The fact is, you are having problems with your wife and you don't know how to fix them. No one is betraying you, Mohammed. You're doing that to yourself. You don't know how to treat women and you never have. And, and now your wife is finally saying she's not gonna put up with it anymore. You just shut up now. I won't shut up. I'm not gonna shut up. I've been told to shut up my whole life. My father told me to shut up. My mother told me to shut up. My ex-wife told me to shut up. And I'm not gonna do it anymore. You hear me?
what we came to understand was is that the that we we have to be able to not be conflict avoidant but to be able to sit in conflict to not lose our voices in conflict to maintain our voices to speak to it we had to understand the difference between being enraged and outraged the, to, the understanding that rage essentially with men is a combination of anger plus shame that when men are shamed when they're young their heads drop and they inculcate that wound in such a way that at some point it's going to come out as rage i think if you um contextualize it by saying to the person i feel mad when you do that because it reminds me of my grade four teacher who shamed me and i hate you for it so you're claiming the origin of it. When you, when, you, when you said those words to me last week, I was really hurt. So my conclu my, uh, I will conclude, I hate you for that. You make me feel something. Now I have to look at the feeling in me. I have a, young, I have a trigger in me and you're, you're pushing on this really sensitive spot. So I wanna just be clear here. Okay. And so if you can have that conversation you can thank them for aggra aggravating you because if you're willing to follow it back to its origin, you're just realizing it's, it's, it, the, the wound is there. They've just pushed it unknowingly. Okay, the wound is there and it's an old wound. Yeah. You're, not, you're saying you are not the problem, but it's right. somehow, but what if they really are the problem? So, uh, so, give, so give me an example. Someone is just generally a jerk, uh, or someone is um, just being offensive, being... Right. Right. Um, or I can't stand you. Okay, I, th I think there's great wisdom. Anytime an emotion like that comes, yeah, I can't stand you. I can't stand being with you. You're too demanding. You, you, you want too much of me. That is an opening into, into, like, into healing, but you've got to be able to tolerate the, the, like whatever, it, whatever it is to, to be able to say, the embarrassment, the humiliation, you have to be able to tolerate that when I think, it, I think our first reaction is when we've, been, when we've been wounded emotionally is to get away from the hot stove, right? No way, no way, I'm gone and you're a bad person and I'm never gonna see you again. That's the way to end it, but it doesn't clear it up. I think you've got to stay engaged and would you be willing to explore this with me? I fucking hate you. Everything you've said to me, it hurts. But I know it's, but I wanna, I wanna make sure it's not you being a jerk. I wanna make sure that, because what, the, you know, a uh, 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 context to say, what's your earliest memory of that, of that feeling? And 99% of the time, it's, it's when I was blank years old and somebody yelled, you know, it, there, it's an old wound that is just being re-triggered. And you are doing this to me. And, and I have had conflict with people where um, you just want them to die and get, like, no, no longer exist in the world because so, they, they, they trigger so much in you, where I thank them profusely for the gift they gave me because they were willing to, to um, spar with me and figure this out with kindness. You know, and sometimes a mediator is required. Sometimes a therapist is there to say, tell me all the things he reminds you of or she reminds you of. Let's really explore this. Let's really explore this. And it's, it's just history. It's history. And it can go back to be, to be very young. One occasion where this man, he carried so much anger from all the defeats of life and the injustices of modern life. And, and I remember in this case, uh, in this man's case, the system um, let him down. 
because he was going through a separation and all that. And it, it was amusing. It's actually from this land how tragically uh, prejudiced um, um, the system was towards his separation. It was prejudiced. And I may not know the full story, but the way he laid out the events, the, the different facts, the men sitting there, they were like, I mean, this seems factual. Why would they say no? But, and, and you can imagine his pain, his frustration, the anger, the resentment, everything inside. And there came a moment where he just stood up, took his own stick, and he started beating the trees for a good five minutes. Total wildness. The stick broke into pieces. It was flying all over the place. There was sweat and spit. At the end of it, he found a very tranquil place. A place of awareness. From which, and I still remember, he said at the end of it, and then he said something like, you know what? I'm going to make this. He said two things. Uh, I'm trying to remember. One he said was like, I'm going to make this a compassionate separation. And uh, everything that she wants, I'll say yes to it. If she wants to be a lesser person, that's her choice. That is not going to equate to who I am. And I'm going to approach this whole process with compassion. If it's going to make her happy, whatever she's going to ask, I'm going to say yes. That was one of the things he said. The second thing he said was about the system or something. Like, you know what? I recognize uh, the system is prejudiced against me, against men. And that's okay. That is a reflection of the consciousness of our society than of my own greatness. So you know what? It is, they are the ones who should be losing sleep because of who they are, not me. I am who I am and I'll be in my greatness. I forgive the system. There's something innate to men which Bly referred to as the wild man, snatching the key from under the mother's pillow, unlocking the wild man and going off on a quest. In mythology, there's always a journey. There's always, you know, whether, you know, and who do we meet along the way? We meet the Cyclops. We meet the Sirens. You know, uh, we have to go after something, the Holy Grail, the Golden Chalice. But, you know, we, we, we've got to test ourselves. And then we've got to bring something back, whether it's like Herman Hesse's Siddhartha, you know, going off and then coming back, or the, uh, the return of the prodigal son. You know, it's always about the mission that takes us away so that we, 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 we come closer to who we really are through being tested and surviving, and then the return.